As a leading member of the space race herself, the Chinese dragon that seeks domination in everything, or at least try seeking, has been taken back by the surprising pace of Elon Musk's consecutive success stories, be it in the field of space R&D or the long glamorized concept of reusable rockets proven good enough with the manifestation of the Falcon series. Hence, China has set massive targets to meet in space transport, and it plans to meet them using the idea of reusables, but Elon, just like in the case of Russian Roscosmos, copying Falcon 9 with their Amur reusable setup, has not commented with a sentiment against Chinese plans and has consistently welcomed competition, and China is entering the arena with its own brand of reusable orbital rockets. Linkspace, China's first private rocket venture, has now revealed the design of its new Line 1 launch vehicle, which can potentially counter SpaceX's Falcon 9 in the not-so-distant future. As China celebrated its sixth National Space Day in the capital city of Jiangsu Province, Nanjing, a promotional video went absolutely viral on a Chinese micro-blogging site, Sina Weibo, where one can witness how China plans to enable suborbital passenger flights in around two decades from now using two variable concepts. However, the first concept is what has captured the interest of space enthusiasts due to the striking similarity to SpaceX's Starship vehicle, where the video shows a large vehicle that can undertake vertical takeoff and a vertical landing. This would not be the first time that the Chinese space program has drawn inspiration from SpaceX as the country tracked SpaceX from the very beginning, particularly with an interest in SpaceX's plans to reuse rocket first stages. During the company's first launch in 2006, a Chinese spy boat was in the small patch of ocean where the Falcon 1 rocket's first stage was due to re-enter. More recently, in 2019, the Chinese Long March 2C rocket tested grid fins, like those used by the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, to steer itself through the atmosphere during the re-entry process. The Chinese space officials also used the opportunity to announce the name of the country's first Mars rover, Zhurong, which is currently moving around the Martian surface already at Utopia Planetia. The China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology Colt, a firm blacklisted by the U.S. Department of Defense that plans to replace the country's aging hypergolic families by using Long March 8, also highlighted the potential for suborbital point-to-point transportation from a booth operated by state-owned rocket manufacturer. In this concept, a vehicle launches from Earth, flies into suborbital space, and touches down halfway around the world in less than an hour, which obviously seems to be a second copy of SpaceX's point-to-point -point transportation concept, which it first unveiled in September 2017. The Sina Weibo video clip showed a concept similar to Starship flight from New York City to Shanghai in just 39 minutes using a horizontal takeoff horizontal landing vehicle which used some sort of electromagnetic catapult. Based on the country's long-term ambitions, Chinese industry would aim to deliver cargo around the globe via suborbital flight by 2035 and passengers by 2045. Upon a revelation of the design and other technical parameters of the new Line 1, the newly proposed launcher's first stage could comprise of a landing system with ample resemblance to Falcon 9's booster. Given how China is already famous for copies of iconic Western products such as Land Rover, aka Land Wind X7 and Roll Rolls-Royce, aka Geely E6, it may not be entirely surprising that China's gone this way in space too. Elon Musk's SpaceX and Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin are the only companies that come to mind when we mention the term reusable rockets. And since SpaceX has already had success with adding the recovery of a rocket after an orbital flight to its portfolio, the pressure on other countries' space corporations is increasing. The Linkspace founder come CEO Hu Zhenyu is optimistic about admitting new stages to his plan book, even though it might not be feasible to make it possible in the first variant. However, it might be a possibility for later versions, such as the New Line 2 or New Line 3. Furthermore, he was quoted saying in an interview that the New Line 1 will be a small launch vehicle that is going to be designed for micro and nano satellite launches and will be able to propel around 440 pounds into sun synchronous orbit of 155 to 342 miles. The ability to be able to reuse New Line 1 rocket, particularly when it comes to the first stage, would enormously reduce the cost of a single orbital launch from about 30 million yen, which is around 4.5 million dollars, to about 15 million yen, 2.25 million dollars, according to Hugh. With more possible price reduction and efficiency to be achieved when the NL1 rocket would have an enhanced version with increased takeoff weight. 
As the new Line 1 has one stage where it is reusable, the company also plans to introduce a second stage that can be reused after landing. According to credible sources, the new Line 1 launch vehicle's construction would cost Link Space around $45 million, and its first flight was due 2020, a deadline which the company had set in 2017 but has missed. This was anticipated because the goal itself seemed unrealistic, for it is hard to develop the core technology behind these complex systems systems, such as that of a flight control and landing. Despite this, the Chinese might take longer to break their monopoly in reusable space technology as envisioned in their planning. However, Hugh and his team are hopeful that their venture would attract clients from the industry and plan on performing missions for the Chinese government as well. The Chinese government has stepped up its own gears as well and has shown interest in following Elon's path by construction of Long March 8, despite the fact that the Chinese government holds high expectations from private firms. The idea behind such a move is to add variety to the country's capabilities when it comes to Sun Synchronous Orbit SSO, and Geosynchronous Transfer Orbit GTO launches. According to Chinese-sponsored media sources, the Long March 8, designed by China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology Colt, can carry a payload worth 5 tons to geosynchronous transfer orbit and worth 2.8 tons to sun synchronous orbit. China might also be seen using Long March 8 to test their technology when it comes to vertical landing and takeoff, to the extent that they plan a landing on even a sea platform using retro propulsion, making it more obvious where they are heading with their goals. After a successful mission of the rocket in 2020, China secured a pat on their back, and the country has already unveiled plans to develop a super-heavy rocket dubbed the Long March 9, with three stages and a height of 103 meters. Named after Chinese Red Army's 1934-35 Long March campaign retreat during the Chinese Civil War, its first flight is expected to occur in 2030, in advance of possible Chinese crewed lunar missions sometime in the 2030s timeframe. A Martian sample return mission also has been proposed as a possible payload for this rocket. Wu Yan Hua, the deputy director of China's National Space Agency, has said that the purpose behind LM9 is for any potentially new crewed lunar or Martian landing missions that the country might undertake. According to the initial plans, China intends to make Long March 9 carry a payload of 140,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit and about 44,000 kilograms to Mars by 2030, and sources state that its first flight can be to retrieve a sample from Mars. The Long March 9 alias CZ-9 was designed five years ago as a rocket with a first stage core diameter of 10 meters. The base variant, CZ-9, has four additional boosters strapped into the core stage, whereas CZ-9A only has two additional boosters and the development program for the rocket was approved by the Chinese government in 2021. Coming on to the CZ-9B variant, it only has the bare 10-meter diameter core stage and has a 50,000-kilogram payload capacity for LEO. Colt has made good headway on the project and has successfully designed the 10-meter diameter alloy rings and made sufficient progress with the 500-ton thrust kerosene liquid oxygen and 220-ton thrust Hydrolox engines. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation released Space Transportation Roadmap for a long term in 2017, which set 2035 as the target for achieving full reusability for its launch vehicles. Now, whether China is able to keep up with the progress of SpaceX or Blue Origin, only time can tell, but one key takeaway for all of us is that with greater competition in space technology, we can rest assured that we are heading in the right direction, for each milestone is a collective win for humanity and resonates hope.